Hello, welcome again to Jackrabbit Journal. Tom Neiman along with Hank McCall. And we've got a story on Dallas Goddard coming up. We've got an interview with Dallas Brown coming up and a look at Western Illinois coming to Brookings on Saturday for the Missouri Valley Conference opener. It's been an off week for the Jacks, Hank, which only means they didn't play a game on Saturday. They've been pretty busy, though, for the last two weeks getting ready now for the Missouri Valley Conference opener. Have you mellowed? Have you simmered a little bit in the last couple of weeks over this one and two start? Or are you still jacked up that the Jacks have only won one of their first three games? No, I have simmered. And I think that everybody else, it would be wise for you to do the same thing because uh, we have to remember that this is a long football season. And these guys are really just getting things going. And for the most part, the preseason is how I like to describe these first three games. Okay, it's over. Uh, we, we should have learned a lot about who we are as a football team up to this point, but also learned uh, – <laughs> learn about a number of areas that we think that we can improve upon and that we have to improve upon in order to be competitive in the Missouri Valley. All right, we will get to that. The first three games, uh, a loss at TCU. Uh, TCU is number 19 in the nation this week in the uh, FBS ranks. A win over Drake, 56-38, and then lost to Cal Poly, 38-31. Cal Poly beat Montana last week, the number three team in the FCS. Cal Poly is uh, very good right now, but there's been some big numbers for the Jacks on both sides of the ball. Scoring 43 points a game, giving up 42, and I know that's the one you want to talk about. But Taron Christian has been good, 69% passing, uh, 10 touchdowns and just one interception so far. Jake Winnick, he's got 20 catches, 8 of those for touchdowns. That is the most in the FCS right now. But the uh, rushing offense for the Jackrabbits, Hank, 129 yards per game right now. That is last among the Missouri Valley Conference teams. Yeah, it's certainly not where that unit wants to be at this point in the season. Uh, they had It was certainly a focus for this group coming into 2016 that, hey, in order for our offense to be what we think it can be, we've got to be able to effectively run the football. They just haven't done that for what I think is a variety of reasons. Uh, number one, you got to start with the big boys up front. And I, I think that once these guys are able to, to develop a little bit more cohesion amongst the group, yeah. I think that they'll get things rolling a little little bit better and you'll see some more of that rhythm uh, that uh, that all offenses strive to and achieve. A, and a big focus of the offense has been Taron Christian not only throwing it but running it as well and that takes away a little bit from running it doesn't it? It, it, it does uh, to a certain degree a absolutely and Taron's been fantastic the first first two games you know the third game he was out of sorts uh, quite a bit and relied on his playmakers to yeah. go up and, and catch some of those 50 50 balls uh, so he looking back on that tape certainly some things that he'll be able to improve upon going forward. All right, the Jackrabbit defense giving up 42 points a game right now, 250 rushing yards per game. But I'll throw this out there. TCU is still second in the Big 12 in total offense at 576 yards per game through four games. The Jacks, uh, they got 660 on the Jacks, but they put up 570 against Arkansas, 590 at SMU. Joe Prothrow of Cal Poly still leads the FCS in rushing, 557 yards in his four games. Cal Poly leads the FCS in rushing. Uh, they lead the Big Sky in rushing by more than 140 yards per game. So, my point to you is the Jacks have played some very good offensive teams. Has it been that, or has the SDSU defense just not been good enough so far. It's been a little bit of both because, yes, they have played some, some very talented offensive units. TCU has playmakers across the board, speed everywhere. Coming into the Cal Poly game, understood that their backs could run the football very well. Very athletic guys, both uh, the fullback and then the, the slot backs who they got yeah. involved early on in that one. So, so, no, they have run up against some very talented offenses. They've been challenged early on in this season, but they have not played to the level that I believe that they certainly can. They've got some young guys in the back for sure uh, linebacking core uh, has a but for the most part linebacking core is a, a very seasoned group one young guy that they're still trying to get acclimated I think they're going to turn things around sooner rather than later all right it'll be interesting to see once we get into valley play here uh, what happens and we will talk about uh, western Illinois coming up a little bit later on but up next uh, Jake Winnicky leads the FCS eight touchdowns through three games he has the Jackrabbit record with 35 in his career we will show you every one of them coming up next Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, and Service First Federal Credit Union. Welcome back. We've all had the pleasure of watching Jack uh, Rabbit wide receiver Jake Winnicky over the years. He is three games into his junior season, already has the school record for touchdown catches. And from his first one against Cal Poly back in 2014 to his latest one against Cal Poly two weeks ago, here are all 35 Jake Winnicky Jack Rabbit touchdowns.
All right, when we come back, the last Jackrabbit tight end to make a splash in the NFL with Steve Hyden. Will current Jackrabbit tight end Dallas Goddard be the next? His story coming up when we come back. Welcome back. Dallas Goddard is in his third season with the Jackrabbits. Over the past two years, he's become definitely one of the Jackrabbits' top receiving targets. And here's David Brown with more on the big man with the great hands from Britain, South Dakota. Some of the most famous tight ends in the NFL, Antonio Gates and Tony Gonzalez, got their start as college basketball players. SDSU's Dallas Goddard also got his start in hoops, but in high school, which is where head coach John Stiglmeyer got his first impression. Watched him play, he's the biggest guy in the court, most athletic guy in the court. All he does is shoot three-point shots and doesn't even follow the shot. So I'm wondering, uh, can this guy compete? Obviously, he can compete. So maybe basketball wasn't his strong suit, but Dallas has shown plenty of strength in a little more than two seasons. Coming in here, I weighed like 200 pounds, now I'm 250, so I got a lot stronger, a lot bigger. So yeah, I feel like I'm a good blocker. I feel like I can pretty much do it all. Besides adding 50 pounds, Dallas has also added another passing option for the Jackrabbit offense. He's already matched his touchdown total from last season when he emerged as the Missouri Valley Football Conference's first team tight end. It's been a dramatic improvement since my uh, redshirt year here. To tell the truth, I couldn't line up. I didn't know my rights or my lefts, so it was a struggle because, I mean, at Britain, uh, they told me go to the right and we'll throw you the ball, run right and everything. So just my overall understanding of football has uh, improved a lot over each year. He definitely hasn't uh, rested on what he did last season. Uh, you know, I challenged him uh, last year in our postseason meetings that, you know, you're, you were first team all conference, but you can still be a lot better. And nothing was better for Goddard than this ridiculous one-handed touchdown against Drake. The comparisons to Odell Beckham came pouring in along with hundreds of social media responses. With all my friends texting me from back home and uh, the hundreds of Twitter notifications and Facebook notifications I've got, I've heard about it quite a bit. I think I've watched the video 100 times at least. When he caught it, I was just in shock and I basically just laughed because it was, uh, I mean, there wasn't much he could do but just say wow and uh, unbelievable play. He's got big hands, he's got sticky gloves and he's, he needs to get it tucked away. But uh, uh, again, that, that, that one play he had was just a phenomenal play. I knew I had a good chance to get the ball. I saw a shorter defender on me, and I ran my route, and I caught the ball, and I don't even really remember catching it. I remember celebrating with my team and everything, and then I walked back to the sideline and looked at the screen to watch the replay, because honestly, I didn't even really remember it, and I didn't know like what it looked like. I just knew the fans were, went crazy and everything. The fans may have gone crazy, but now the play of Dallas Goddard is anything but. With elite pass catching skills and an improvement in the blocking game, the idea of moving to the NFL isn't out of the question. And while Dallas still has nearly half of his SDSU career to go, a future career is now very much on the horizon. It's a goal of mine to play further than the Jackrabbits, so I'm gonna keep pushing for that. The sky's the limit for Dallas. Um, you know, he, he's just gotta continue to uh, work and get better every day, but he definitely has that uh, type of potential to play at the next level. He's on the verge of uh, writing his name as one of the best, if not the best. Uh, Colin Koshart played in the pros, Steve Hyden played in the pros. Uh, the neat thing about Dallas, you know, he came in uh, not having, having been challenged in, in high school and has really, really improved himself uh, with hard work. Well, Hank, the last Jackrabbit tight end to lead the team in catches was Steve Hyden, who did it back in 1998. Hyden was an NFL draft pick, played for 11 years in the NFL with San Diego and with Cleveland, and we'll see if Dallas Goddard is on that same kind of path. Well, from that Dallas to this Dallas, Jack's linebacker, uh, linebacker Dallas Brown coming up next, talking about interceptions and superstitions and why any kid from Arizona would ever want to come play football in South Dakota. Welcome back. Dallas Brown has been a playmaker for the Jackrabbit defense for three years now. And Hank, what is the difference between a solid defensive player and a guy that's a playmaker? Solid defensive players are in position nine times out of ten, and they do their job every single day. Now, playmakers, on the other hand, they're in position, but when the opportunity comes up, they're not afraid. They don't hesitate to make a play on that football that could change the outcome of the game for their team. Big play guys. All right, here is Dallas Brown. He's in the Rabbit Fire interview with our David Brown. 
first question, have you Dallas Brown until the TCU game ever been to Dallas, Texas? The only time I've been to Dallas, Texas is in, through the airport and then I fly back home to Arizona in the summer, or, you know, winter break or whatnot. That's about it. Would you like to explore Dallas, Texas a little yeah. bit? My mom, my mom went to a Cowboys game on Thursday before TCU and she like loved it. She loved Dallas, so I would love to go check it out. Did you ever find out why you were named Dallas? Because of the Cowboys. My mom's a Cowboys fan. So see, what's funny, Dallas Goddard was also named after the Dallas really? Cowboys. <laughs> you so never told you me guys that. were both named after the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. That's crazy. Unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, not a Cowboys fan? No, I'm a Browns fan, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I suppose Dallas Brown, you got to be one or the other. Uh, third question. You're from Tucson, Arizona. What's your favorite part of Tucson? Um, I'd go with just my friends, you know. I have some good friends. I've made some good friends here, but I have a couple friends back home that'll always be true friends to me and always have my back and always be there for me. Obviously a big difference in climate between Tucson and Brookings. So currently, do you have more winter or summer clothing? Definitely more winter now. Uh, when I came here at first, I never even owned a pair of jeans. Uh, that was a reality check. So I have a lot more car hearts. Never knew what a car heart was until I came up here. <laughs> I got one of those. So what to you is shorts weather? Like, are, are you cold at 60 degrees? Because here people wear shorts at like 50, 55 degrees. Yeah. What, what's your threshold for wearing shorts versus pants? Oh, I'm wearing sweats when it's 50, maybe even 60. I don't, I don't mess with the, the chill wind breeze or anything like that. I just like to be comfortable. What is your favorite Coach Stig catchphrase? Definitely the holy nutmeg. That's just been a thing. Every time someone messes up or you know, a ref makes a bad call, he just yells at him and says, holy nutmeg. And he's serious, but it kind of makes me laugh when I, when I hear it. So, When you first heard it, what did you think? Uh, I didn't know what nutmeg was, honestly. I was just like, I, I was expecting him to say something else, and I heard nutmeg come out, and I was like, whoa, I don't even know what that means, but it was funny. Favorite food? Favorite food. I like popcorn. I like popcorn a lot. Any specific kind, like caramel corn, cheddar corn, just Extra regular butter. popcorn. Extra butter. Do you have a pregame ritual or superstition that you have to do before every game? Yeah, I have to have the same undershirt on like every single game. Even in high school, I had a, a gold Sabino shirt that one time I forgot it at home. It was about an hour before the game, and I was looking for it, and I had to drive home and race home and grab it. You have to have a certain like outfit on underneath my pads that I have to wear. I'm assuming you wash it between. Oh, yeah, of course. Of okay, course. That's good. <laughs> Uh, your favorite game you've been involved in as a Jackrabbit? Northern Iowa, my redshirt freshman year, I think went to double overtime. We ended up winning, Brandon Hebert caught the football. Just the, you know, they're a tough team and just the atmosphere after like, just everyone just celebrating and everyone just like going crazy. It was awesome, it was a cool experience. And then last one, who's the better Dallas football player, you or Dallas Goddard? <laughs> Uh, two sides of the ball, so we're both good players. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine. Obviously, you see what he do, does with one hand. It's an awesome play, but no, nah, I can't. I can't answer that question. But oh come on! I mean, one. if I if I was guarding him, then I'm better. But <laughs> he, he's to... not going to catch it with one hand on me. <laughs> That's all we need to hear. Thanks. <laughs> Our thanks to Dallas for playing along this week. The Jackrabbits start Missouri Valley Conference play this Saturday at home against Western Illinois. Why the unbeaten Leathernecks are going to present some problems. We'll talk about them next. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, and Service First Federal Credit Union. South Dakota State starts the Missouri Valley Conference football season this Saturday. The Jacks at home against Western Illinois. And their former coach, Bob Nielsen, is now at South Dakota, but he had been building them into a really good team over the last uh, four or five years. They had two wins five years ago. They ended up with seven last year. He's kind of turned them into a sneaky good team. Oh, he really has. This is a program that's certainly on the rise, and it's, it's obvious in their ability to bring in a new coach. Hey, hey guys, we've got the players here. It really doesn't matter who's leading this team. We're headed in the right direction. They're playing good football right now, and uh, they're coming in to do one thing, Tom, especially with the tape that they've seen on SDSU the past couple of weeks. They're coming in to run the football. They've got a really good running back in Steve McShane, who leads the FCS right now at 147 yards a game. But Western Illinois also has a quarterback named Sean McGuire. He uh, threw for 315 yards in Western's win over Northern Illinois last week. Uh, last year, he was a redshirt freshman and ran for a touchdown, threw for another one as Western Illinois beat South Dakota State in over 
overtime in that final regular season game of the year. But this is a more traditional offense, isn't it? I guess you could say it's not TCU, it's not Cal Poly running the, uh, the triple option. More of a traditional pro-style offense that the Jackrabbit defense has seen and has done very well against over the last couple of years. Yeah, it, it is more traditional, certainly. The Jackrabbit defense, they're going to be able to line up and, and play football for the most part uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, fascinating stat on Western Illinois. They have yet to turn the football over hmm. in three games in 2016. A uh, confident quarterback led by a seasoned group of big boys up front on the offensive line. South Coast State has three sacks through the first three games. they got to get some pressure on this young quarterback coming up on Saturday, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Got That's got to be, you know, after stopping the run, next priority is when we do get them in, in second and long and in third and long, uh, we're thinking as a, as a defensive unit, we've got to be able to get some pressure on that young quarterback and get him uncomfortable in what should be another hostile environment uh, at Dana J. J. Dykow Stadium. Western's wins are against Eastern Illinois, Northern Arizona out of the big sky, and then Northern Illinois, and, uh, North, Northern Illinois an FBS team, but Northern is 0-4. It's just hard to tell where Western Illinois is right now, where South Coast State is. Kind of hard to tell where anybody's at right now going into the conference season. It, it really is, it, but the great, that's the great thing about college football and the great thing about the Missouri Valley. It, it's just starting now, fellas. And for SDSU, they got to take a look at the last three weeks and say, hey, this is what we were able to take from that. Let's forget about how those things played out one and two. You got to be angry about that record. There's no doubt about that. But hey, it's basically 0-0 right now. This is a new season. So challenge yourselves, fellas. How are you going to approach this new season? What are you going to do? See you next week.